God, everybody. I'm Prophetina. Hi, I'm Apostle Clown. Welcome. It's Tuesday. Hallelujah. And the Lord Hi. is still on the throne. <laughs> Look at that. All right, you go, girl. It shows me that you have great taste. <laughs> she said we have the same wig. <laughs> Praise God. Isn't it awesome? I just love it. I'm trying to get this Oh, wow. Awesome. So do you look as good as me and yours as I look at mine? <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. So we are uh, just getting ourselves together here, getting Come ready. To Praise God. <laughs> good Jenny's morning, Jenny. Good morning, Prophetess. We have Periscope this morning. We have live stream. Praise God. <laughs> and we have Facebook. Praise God. No more heartache. This is the day I've got joy. Mm. Grab a soda, grab a cup of coffee. Hallelujah. The Lord is with us this morning. Mm. Praise God. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Your Bible there? Praise God. The prophet's authority and his jurisdiction today. That's what we're going to be going over. Praise God. <laughs> Thank you. Praise God. It's like the river floods my soul. Praise God, everybody. Welcome and good morning. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. We got you guys on live stream, uh, Periscope, and Facebook this morning. And we're going to be talking about your authority. First, your authority as a believer. And guess what? Your authority did not wane. It did not lessen when God gave you the call to be a prophet. In fact, your authority has increased. Not only has, and, and the, the authority that you have as a prophet now is being built on the authority that God has given you as a believer through Christ Jesus. Oh, and I'm so excited about what we're going to be talking about this morning. Man of God, how are you this morning? I'm doing great. Woke up feeling refreshed. <laughs> it's the day of the Lord. How to do you? Oh, praise God. Praise God. Amen. You're feeling refreshed this morning, aren't I you? I am. I'm, it's, it's, it's surprising. <laughs> it really is surprising because I'm the one that changed my work schedule, okay? And so I'm going to work earlier now and getting off earlier, but he's the one that's refreshed. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. So, bless the Lord. Let's get going. Okay, we got a lot to go over this morning, and we're going to have the man of God just go ahead and give us a prayer. Cover us. Hallelujah. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Our Father who art in heaven, <laughs> hallowed be thy name. We bless you, O God. Hallelujah. We choose to bless you. O oh, bless the Lord, O oh, my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Hallelujah. Forget none of his benefits. O oh, hallelujah. Who redeems our life from the pit. Who forgives our sins and puts them as far as the east is from the west. You, hallelujah. Who redeems us and calls us his own. Hallelujah. It's the name of the Lord that shall be praised. Praise the Lord with us and let us exalt his name together. Oh, this poor man heard him and cried unto the Lord. And the Lord heard him and delivered him out of all his fears. Hallelujah. We thank you, O oh God, that you redeem us from the curse of the law. You redeem us from the 
sins that so easily Lord entangle Lord us. You Jesus. redeem us from the enemy. How do you, you redeem you, us from the, the poverty and the bad mindsets? How do you, and we're redeemed not just from, but to your glorious grace, to your anointing, to your blessing, you, to Jesus. your sonship. How do you, the Bible says the whole earth groans so for the manifestation of the sons, sons of, of God. God. Hallelujah. We thank you for this teaching, O Lord, that we might learn to manifest as the sons yes, of Lord. God. Hallelujah. We thank you that you're not finished with us yet, that he who has begun a good work in us Amen. will perform it, perfect it Amen. until the day of Christ. Hallelujah. You're not finished with us yet. Thank we thank you, you O God. We pray, come thy kingdom, be, be done, done thy like will God. in earth as it is in heaven. Thank you, Lord. Oh, in our families, yes. in our churches, in our homes. Oh, hallelujah. May you be the Lord of all in our businesses, you, in our government. Hallelujah. We Thank need you, you oh God, hallelujah. in media, arts and entertainment. Hallelujah. In education. Oh yeah, God, come and be that. Lord of oh, all. Hallelujah. We bless you, oh God. Oh, oh I pray hallelujah. that you would give us this Thank day you, our Jesus. daily bread, that you would bring Thank provision you, to yes, each and every one that's on the line. Hallelujah. Yes, to Jesus. our ministry, to our families, in yes, Jesus' Lord. name. Hallelujah. Oh, to our sons you, and daughters, Jesus. to our grandsons Thank and granddaughters. You, we bless you, O oh God. We thank you for your thank provision. You, Hallelujah. Oh, in Jesus' name. Thank Hallelujah. You, Forgive thank us, you, Lord, Jesus. where we've gone astray. Mm -hmm. Teach us your ways. Hallelujah. Oh, oh, and Lord, help us to remove the speck out of our own eye, the log out of our own eye, so that we can help remove the speck out of our yes. brothers. In yes, Jesus. Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Forgive you, us where we've judged mm -hmm. others yes, unmercifully. Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, because we thank you for your mercy. Thank we you, thank Lord. you that you've forgiven us from all yes, of our Lord. sins. Amen. And Lord, keep, do not lead us in temptation, into temptation, but deliver, deliver us from, from evil, evil and the evil one. Amen. Devil, you have no part in us. We rebuke you in Jesus' name. In oh, name hallelujah. We set in aside this Jesus. time to Thank be a holy Lord. time of God's word Thank and you, faithfulness. Lord and teaching hallelujah yes, Lord. And heavenly father we thank you that you are lord of all that there's no devil no demon no uh, mindset that can stand before you hallelujah in jesus name jesus. For we know it's your kingdom your power your glory yes we we seek after you yes. it is in your presence that we find the fullness of joy. It's in yes. your presence that we find your kingdom. Yes, it's in Lord. your presence that we find your power. Yes, it's Jesus. in your presence that we find your glory. Yes, and we love you, Lord. We thank you that we can be a part of that in your presence, in your presence, in your courts. Hallelujah. Among your yes, people. Lord. We thank you that you said that the hallelujah that you would be with us when we praise you. So we praise you and honor you. We adore you. We thank you for giving us uh, this sonship and this forgiveness. Yes, Lord. We pray your blessing on the prophet this morning thank and all you, that here. Hallelujah you, on your servant. And we just ask that you would uh, come in a mighty way. Anoint your word, not just uh, your written word, but bring rhema into our minds and our hearts. Hallelujah. Give us understanding and wisdom on how to apply these truths. And yes, we just Jesus. thank you for all that you're doing on this pro prophet's prophetic prayer line. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us. We have Prophetess Denny on with us. Uh, bless you. God bless you, woman of God. Uh, so today we're talking about the authority and the jurisdiction of a prophet. It's very important uh, that you understand the place that God has given you and the assignment, you know, that he's given you. And so we want to make sure that you're undergirded uh, in this knowledge and in this understanding because this is one of the foundational anointings and graces, you know, that God will send to build up the rest of who you are praise god hallelujah and so you know like you have your salvation believing god you know after that the holy ghost has come upon you you shall uh, receive power. power these are foundational that's a foundational truth okay and so once you've received that power and once you know who you are in christ then what there's another foundational anointing and grace that you need as god has established you in in the office you know, of a prophet, if he's called you a prophet. And one of those foundational truths that you must have, now we've left these elementary teachings, 
you know, uh, uh, of baptisms, you know, and and uh, all of that stuff, the blood of Jesus. I mean, that's all there. We know that, you know, that's the foundation that we have. Now we're going on to the meatier things of the Lord. We're going over on to the weightier things of God, especially when you walk in the office of a prophet. And so God wants to establish you and anchor you now in another foundational truth, another foundational understanding. And that foundational understanding and truth is, is who you are, your placement, your authority, okay, that he's given you to walk in this office. And it's really, you know, very exciting because as God calls you, he gives you the training, he gives you the placement, you know, and he gives you the assistance that you need to carry out, you know, what he's given you to do. And so it's so exciting to find out every day God. how intelligent God is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he is way intelligent. You know, he's way more gifted than we are. And so he's peeped you out from even before you were born. You know, when you came together in your mother's womb, he knew who you were. He knew who he had called you to be. And he gave you the DNA to be right where you are right now and to be catapulted into this great anointing and this great gift, man of God, as he establishes, you know, his government through the apostles and prophets. Isn't that exciting? It is. And, you know, even as a, uh, a newborn believer, you have great authority in Christ. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. We have teachers on the mission field that are teaching that they can be, they can be dead raisers mm -hmm. from the get-go. Hallelujah. Hey, it's, it's passed by the mission field now. Yeah. I heard a great I, testimony last night where this young prophet is teaching, you know, in his class. And, and, and the teaching is so powerful and dynamic that these young people are raising folks from the dead. So, hey, it's hallelujah. on state side now. You don't have to be a missionary to have the authority to raise the dead. God has brought that anointing and grace is right here in these United States and in your state and a church near you. <laughs> <laughs> in, Christ, in Christ, we can do all things. In Christ, <laughs> God. hallelujah. Amen. He says, you've asked nothing in my name. Now if you ask in my name, you can do, you can Anything. tell this mountain to be that be removed, and it will be. Hallelujah. Okay. Praise God. Praise There's God. so many different scriptures. Hallelujah. You were talking about Acts uh, Luke. 1 and 2. Oh, Acts 1 and 8. Acts, I'm talking oh, first and second chapters. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, you shall receive power. power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, mm -hmm. and you will be my witnesses. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. You will, and if you break that out in the Amplified, it's even more exciting. Mm -hmm. You know, it's so important for us to get a hold of who we are in Christ. <laughs> Absolutely. In Christ, you know, <laughs> we have redemption. In Christ, we have forgiveness of sin. Mm -hmm. In Christ, we can do all things. And then if you get to the apostolic uh, calling where the disciples mm -hmm. were, were told to go out, the, mm -hmm. the 12 of them, two by two, and then after that, 70 were sent out. Yes, and what did he tell them? Praise God. What did he tell them? He's going to read that scripture uh, for you. And, and this is uh, your undergirding scripture for the, the day as we go forth into the authority uh, and the jurisdiction of the prophet. Praise God. And Luke ten seventeen and the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us Amen. through thy name. Amen. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan falling like lightning. Hallelujah. Mm. Praise God. As lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Praise God. Notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written, written in, in heaven. In amen. Hallelujah. And so your name is written in heaven as a prophet of God. Hallelujah. Your name is written. Rejoice in that. But don't forget the fact that God has given you power to tread on scorpions and serpents. And I'm going to tell you something. I realize that power to tread on scorpions is an anointing and grace that when I first moved to Arizona, I had scorpions in my house, y'all. Okay. <laughs> and every month a scorpion would, I would have to kill a scorpion. I mean, little tiny ones. And then I saw the great grandmama uh, in my shower one day. But I want to tell you something. One night, I came home going through the door and the Holy Spirit whispered to me, there's a scorpion in the kitchen. All right. And out of all those 12 scorpions, one every month showed up trying to bite me. <laughs> 
do you know that God protected me? The Holy Spirit protected me from those scorpions. You hear about people be, being bitten by scorpions, stepping on them in their house. Okay. God protected me from the scorpions. And I do believe that that word came alive, you know, in my life that, you know, you're guarded, you're protected. You can, you can tra trample on scorpions and snakes and, and not we, even be harmed. So and once God. I found out about them, I stepped on them. Uh, yes, that's right. <laughs> As a prophetic, uh, prophetic gesture, right? And then but I it called was the real. exterminator. <laughs> <laughs> got him so out of the whole neighborhood. Him, out of the know, neighborhood. So praise God. I just want to let you know that uh, spiritually that's true because we have demonic forces that God has called us to step upon. But in the natural, it is also true as well that God has given you the authority over scorpions and adders, snakes, whatever gets in your way, you have the authority over it. So now that we've settled that, let me just share some things with you. You know the day... Uh, there's a prophetic shift that's well, going on. Let me just finish that okay. verse a little bit. And mm -hmm. over all the power of the enemy, mm -hmm. and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Wow. A lot of people are walking around today in fear, mm -hmm. like the devil has some great power. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I see it on the on the face of people. I see it on the way they carry themselves. Mm -hmm. they're, they're afraid. Oh, no. What about the power of the devil? Mm -hmm. What about this... Uh, mm -hmm. These uh, this witchcraft and this yeah. demonic. You you spent several days talking about uh, overcoming witchcraft. And, and some we're going to be your talking about it again and, tomorrow. We're going to start our series again tomorrow as well. Praise and God. And that's why we want you get want to, you to get undergirded in your authority, uh, so that you will know that this is as we talk about these uh, these uh, things, uh, these subjects that you know that you have authority over it. And so, when people don't understand. The fullness of their calling, especially as a prophet, it becomes easier to allow um, people to pressure you into functioning like a psychic. Okay? Mm. And what that means is that people, as soon as they find out you're a prophet, what do they do? What's the first thing they ask you for? Will you give me a word? There you go. Okay? And what people need to understand is that even though you can prophesy and God has called you to be a prophet, he doesn't allow you to prophesy all the time, okay? And so um, it's a huge misrepresentation in the body of Christ. Uh, the first thing people want to do, ask you, give me a word, give me a word, give me a word, okay? And so what we try to do as prophets is we attempt to perform the way people want us to perform, okay? The way people view us as prophets and not in the capacity, the prophetic capacity that God has given us. Okay. And so when you start acting like, you know, a, a God, you know, a spiritual, um, um, psychic, okay. It really is. It borders on a spirit of rebellion. It borders on witchcraft. And, and so we want to get away from that because God has given you a specific authority, a specific assignment and a specific placing, you know, in the body of Christ, okay? And so when you allow people to use you like a psychic, you are actually prostituting your gifts, mm -mm -mm. okay? You're prostituting this great and mighty call, you know, that God has given you. And we're not saying that God is never going to, you know, have you prophesy to people and never have you give a word to someone who comes up and, and pulls, up, pulls on your coattail saying, gimme, give gimme, give gimme give a word, word, word. You know, no, that's not what we're saying. But what we're saying is that there's a higher call, a higher anointing, you know, for your gifting. And God has not called you to prostitute this most holy gift, you know, that he's given you. And so there's a wise place, a place of wisdom, a place of grace that God has placed, you know, you in. And so God is transcending this us. There's a shift that's happening in this prophetic anointing and a prophetic gift, okay? And so what happens is, you know, when you allow, when we have allowed people, you know, to use us as, uh, as Christian psychics, you know, uh, the gifts of prostituted ministry becomes who can prophesy the best, you know, who can raise the most money, okay, mm -hmm. whose itinerary is the fullest, you know, and these become, you know, this is what we've relegated the, the gift, you know, of prophecy to. Okay, instead of who is fulfilling their prophetic mandate, their prophetic assignment, this assignment that's on their lives, okay, not in competition with other prophets. We are not to be in competition 
you know, with each other. But we are to look to the Lord and come together as a company of prophets, put all of our gifts and calling together in, in you know, in, uh, in one pool, so to speak, and then let the Holy Ghost use us according to his will. Because if you're a prophet and you are assigned to, to prophecy, you know, you are going to prophesy. You are going to give words. That's what God has called you to do. But it's not going to be at the will of men and women who are used to going to psychics, getting that kind of word. It's going to be at the will and the whim of the Almighty Father, of the Holy Spirit, who should be directing your call, directing you in uh, the assignment that he's placed you in. And when you get bogged down, you know, with, uh, with all of these encumberments, you know, to the gifting that God has given you, you can miss the mark of the true assignment, you know, that God has brought you forth. So you need to fulfill, you need to understand that you're going to have to fulfill your prophetic assignment. You actually do have a prophetic assignment and it's not as a Christian psychic either. You know how I can tell, uh, you're right, it's be, people want a word mm -hmm. and they want to know, uh, and a lot of times the word has to do with their feelings mm -hmm. you know they want to know if they're going to have a spouse mm -hmm. they want to know if they're going to have a house mm -hmm. they want to know if they're going to have mm -hmm. a car mm -hmm. they want to know you know the the mundane things about life how to do it it's not the matter of seeking god for your will there was a man who wrote a book about the purpose-filled life Amen. and mm -hmm. the whole perspective was it's not about you it's about God God's and purpose, what yeah. are his purposes. Mm -hmm. And that book went around the world to the place. Now, see, because he, he's pointing towards the purpose of God, mm -hmm. he's pointing towards God's, you know, the kingdom of God, really. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think he uses that word. But you know what happened? He didn't seek for fame and, and money. But because he understood those purposes, he sold so many books, mm -hmm. he doesn't have to ever work again. Mm -hmm. He gave all the money he ever earned in 10 years before that book was written back to the church because he's getting made so much money through the book. You know, it's but he put the purposes of God first. Amen. And then God, what does the Bible say? We worry about the, our clothes. We mm -hmm. worry about our raiment. We worry about our food. But he mm -hmm. says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all these things will be added yes. unto you. Yes. Hallelujah. Okay. Well, I want you to know that day that I just talked about, well, okay, is over. God is bringing a shift in the prophetic, a Amen. shift in his government. Praise God. The prophet is designed to communicate God's heart, okay, to people, not fulfill the desires of people. And so God is bringing a shift. There's a new era in the prophetic anointing emerging in these new realms of glory that I've been talking to you about. Now, there's a bunch of new realms of glory. I mean, there's just bunches of them, but this is one of them. There's a new shift. There's a shift that's going on in the authority of the prophet and the apostles. And God is doing this, and it's for his purpose. Okay, a new era, understand, a prophetic anointing is emerging in the new realms of glory. And God is assigning companies of prophetic people. There's a company of prophetic people that are returning to the fullness of what the Bible represents for, their, uh, uh, for the um, anointing and grace that God has given them. And so that's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about um, what you need to know as far as your authority is concerned. And you need to know what your authority is. You need to know the authority of other prophets around you. But more specifically, we're focusing on you today. Okay? You, you need to know the authority that's been assigned, you know, to your office. And then we're going to talk about what distinguishes the authority of a prophet. Okay, there are four things that distinguish you, you know, from one who just prophesies to the office of a prophet. Okay, the content of your prophecy, okay, and how it, it will tell what your uh, assignment is, you know, what your place is when you prophesy. It will give you an indication and a clue to what the jurisdiction even that God has given you, okay, and the placement that God has given you. So you listen to the word of the prophets, okay? You, you can listen to their words, okay, and the prophecies that they, they give, and you can determine, praise God, what just about what their authority is and what their realm and their sphere of authority is. So praise God. Let me get, Let me get that. Yeah, okay, praise God. And so uh, we need to plug in the phone here. 
And so we're going to be talking about um, the content of prophecy, okay, uh, and the jurisdiction around a prophet's jurisdictional authority and how prophets can expand their authority. Isn't that awesome? You know, you may be thinking, what authority do I have now? You know, so there is a way for you uh, to actually expand the authority uh, that God has given you. Thank you so much, uh, Prophetess Tiffany, Tiffany, for joining us uh, this morning. Prophetess and Pastor Tiffany Thompson out of Texas. God bless you, woman of God. Praise God. And so bless the Lord while he's getting that ready. Let me just plug this into the phone here. Hold on one second, everybody. We don't want you to go out on us, okay? We don't want the phone to go out on us. There we go. We got that. All right, baby. You can sit back down now. Thank you. Praise God. So you need to know <clears throat> what your authority and jurisdiction is. And so what? What? let me just define authority, okay? Your authority is just determined you know, by the place of your assignment, okay? And let's see, where did I write that down for you? So if I'm assigned in, in Phoenix, that doesn't necessarily mean I have authority in uh, Los Angeles. No. doesn't necessarily mm -hmm. mean I have authority in uh, New York City. <laughs> you could, but it doesn't necessarily mean uh, that you do, okay? It can expand. It can, uh, absolutely. If you want to stay, you want to stay in your lane, right? Mm -hmm. You want to stay in, in in the metron of your authority. Mm -hmm. How to do? And the Lord will keep increasing that as you're responsible. He's just like any other good um, leader. If he sees you doing well, you know he has the parable of the talents, and if he sees you doing well with what you have, he'll give you more, right? Absolutely. So um, let's see. There's an authority that's assigned to the office, and this is one of the main factors that distinguish, distinguishes prophets from a prophesier. Now, if you've been a prophesier and you've given prophetic words, okay, it, it, there's a difference between the gift of prophecy and the office of the prophet, and it has to do with the weight and the anointing that God puts on the words between the two, okay, and the power of the word that it has to come to pass. Okay, so we're going to be talking about your jurisdiction as well. And your dur jurisdiction is a place of assignment, a metron of authority. Okay, your primary prophetic anointing is found here and will be determined by the nature of your assignment. So the authority that God gives you and the jurisdiction that he gives you, first of all, your authority has to do with where you're placed. Okay, and so you can be placed uh, as a prophet like Jeremiah over the nations, you could be a local prophet over the city as Jonathan was just talking about over Phoenix. But what about Anna? Remember Anna in the scriptures? What was Anna's jurisdiction as a prophetess? Her jurisdiction was what? The temple. Okay. And so she prophesied and prayed all day long in the temple. And who was Anna? Wasn't she the one that came and prophesied over uh, Jesus' over baby birth. Jesus, yes. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. so, I mean, but, yeah, so we need to remember, you know, help us put it in context. Not mm -hmm. everybody's going to remember Anna. Anna, okay, but that, that was powerful. Mm -hmm. You know, here she was, she was assigned. And you remember in heaven, some angels are assigned just to be in God's glory. That's right. How to do it. Praise God. And a lot of times, those that are closest to the throne have the most authority. Mm -hmm. You know, Gabriel. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> oh, how to do you? Mm -hmm. He's right there at the throne. And when God mm -hmm. gives him a command, you know it's an important one. Praise, Praise God. God. Now, he's he's a general. So he can, you know, give, he can speak to his lower angels and they will go to work. Mm -hmm. But the, here, the... You want to remember at all times, how to do you, how do you get strong, how do you get powerful Amen. by being in his presence. Amen, absolutely. And so your authority, the authority of a prophet, you know, is the right to act in a specified way. Okay, you get a right from God. That's where your right is coming from. Remember, everything, your gifting, your call, your anointing, your glory, it's all coming from God. Okay, and so as the prophetic anointing, you have been graced with that, then you have been giving, uh, given authority to operate, to act in a specified way, in a delegated way. And your authority has been delegated from the throne of God, from God himself. 
from the Holy Spirit. You have a delegation of authority. Okay, and what what happens to most of us is that we don't know what our realm is. You know, I used to hear our, our apostles say all the time, you know, find out what your lane is and stay in your lane, you know, and it's very important for you to know, you know, what the lane is, what's the sphere of authority that God has given you, what is the placing of God, okay, because that is going to bespeak the power and the authority, you know, that he's given you. Praise God. Now, all of us have been given, you know, the authority to cast out devils to raise the dead, to heal the sick. But then we see others who have a great authority and anointing for healing. Others have a great authority and anointing for deliverance. Okay, and so you see all these different manifestations of the authority and the power of God. It's not that the person who has a great healing ministry can't be used to get somebody set free, but that person knows that their sphere of authority has been given to them as far as the healing grace is concerned. And so they're going to walk in that lane, stay in that lane, unless God tells them otherwise or expands them to another place. Okay? And I'm, I'm reminded of the Apostle Paul. He was speaking to the, the, the churches, uh, the Greek churches, if you will. And he said, I may not have authority everywhere, but you are my sons and daughters. Mm -hmm. You, I have authority over, basically, is mm -hmm. what he was saying. And you, you know that I'm your, your, your spiritual father. Absolutely. Absolutely. So when he went to Jerusalem, mm -hmm. and there, there was a conflict over how to deal with these uh, people that weren't all being circumcised, weren't all following all the Jewish laws, he didn't come as one having authority over the church in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm, he see? submitted his reasons. He submitted his uh, uh, the work that God was doing through him and said, you need to consider this strongly. The, all the power that God is releasing to the Greek church, to the Gentile church, and compare that with what, the way you're thinking. Mm -hmm. So he, he went and submitted this to the council in, in Jerusalem and you know, it's it's so powerful here. We we think that the apostles were the strongest 12, you know. And, but if you look closely in the book of Acts, you'll see the head of the church was actually James. Uh -huh. And that's, we're not talking about Peter, James, and John. We're and talking Jesus about Jesus' half-brother half brother, that yes. grew up with him mm -hmm. and was around all the time. Mm -hmm. He was the one who ended up being in, in charge of the Jerusalem church. Mm -hmm. I didn't even realize for years when we, you know, because we were always reading about Peter, James, mm -hmm. and John. Mm -hmm. James passed away. Uh, you know, he well, he was killed. The first and, apostle, you mean. The first apostle, James. and we no, even look not at Jesus the Jesus' brother, the James, James, uh, the apostle, the Peter, James, and John, mm -hmm. James, mm -hmm. and that apostle was killed. So, who wrote the book of James? Mm -hmm. It wasn't James the apostle. It was Jesus. It brother. was Jesus' half brother, mm -hmm. the apostle. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Praise so we got to understand the spiritual authority. Absolutely. And so we're talking about authority, and then we're going to talk about jurisdiction and the authority that God has given you. But right now, you know. Uh, that your authority of God has been it's been delegated from God okay and it can be delegated from a person it could be delegated from your apostle it could be delegated from the bishop over your churches but there, your authority is a delegated authority okay uh, and it specifically comes from God so in uh, the gifting that he's given you now authority also too is like we were talking about official permission and sanction all right, so when you go into another town, there are gatekeepers in that town, just like Jonathan was talking about. And so, you know, your authority may not be the same authority that you have, you know, where you're coming from when you go out to evangelize. There's, there's someone that has invited you in to the place where you are, thereby giving you the authority to act uh, as God has given you to act, okay? And, and, and most times you don't want to go into a place you know, that you have not been specifically given the authority by the higher ups or by those who God has placed in that place. You don't want to go into a place without that permission. Okay. Uh, in a lot of places, sometimes God is just going to send you to send you. But when you, when we're talking about the levels of authority and government that God is establishing, you know, through his prophets and through his uh, apostles, then there is also a delegated authority that you can have from uh, the standing authority that God has already placed in a place. Understand that? Did I say that right? You That's got that? That's powerful. Well, it makes me think of uh, 
coming in and respecting the the, exactly. uh, the ministers that are already mm -hmm. working on in exactly. that city exactly. and, and giving them the honor due mm -hmm. you know it's not a matter of there's not room for you mm -hmm. there's plenty of room plenty there's of so room. many uh, unsaved people and so mm -hmm. many people that need healing so mm -hmm. many people that need to know about the kingdom mm -hmm. of god but we don't trample on another man's work no. to get that done absolutely you know not. we respect all the things that god is doing in that area mm -hmm. you know and so you may be, a, you know, the most powerful prophet, you know, uh, in your area, in the sphere of authority that God has given you. You may be, you know, you may be hot stuff, you know, in, in uh, your town in North Carolina or in, in Alabama or, you know, Connecticut, Massachusetts or Detroit. But as soon as you step outside of that sphere of authority that God has given you, do you know you're dealing with new demons and new principalities? And you just don't want to go thinking, you know, that, hey, I got authority over here in Hartford, Connecticut. I'm going to go take the authority, you know, that I have in Hartford, Connecticut and use it down in Louisiana somewhere. <clears throat> and that may be all possible. More than likely it is possible. You know, but the thing that we're trying to get you to understand is that, you know, your sphere of authority is the placement that God has given you. It has to do with where God has placed you and, and um, what he has given you to do in that place. Let me let me just mention, do you remember whenever <laughs> Jesus went into a new town or mm -hmm. whenever Paul went into a new town, they went to the synagogue. Yes, they did. And they, they started did. preaching there. Now, a lot of times they were misunderstood and thrown mm -hmm. out and all that kind of thing, but, they but that's where they first. started. They went there first. I hadn't thought about it mm -hmm. in terms yes. of, of uh, it has to do with the authority. Authority, and, absolutely. And giving honor to whom honor is due. Absolutely. Many of them understood and believed, but the, once they were thrown out then they have the right to preach to everyone mm -hmm. you know so but they started there that that's in the lines of authority, authority that's powerful yes, absolutely and so you know your authority is is the uh let's say the extensive specialized knowledge about a subject okay and your personal expertise there is so much ministry to do in the world uh, today that God has assigned, you know, prophets over all kinds of uh, uh, manifestations of the enemy <laughs> to bring about his glory in the earth. And all of us are not going to be doing the same thing. We are going to be moved by the same spirit. Okay, we all worship the same God, but we all have different levels of authority and the administration of that authority as well. And so God wants to sit you in a place so that you can learn and understand, okay, who you are in him, who he has called you to be. Now, remember, it's not going to be a hard thing in this dispensation to understand the call of God that's on your life. In times past, you know, we were talking about the seers yesterday. A lot of people have the seers gift. But years ago, when I first got saved 45 years ago, there was no place for you to go to get any kind of training on that seeing gift that you had, okay? It was all by trial and error, mostly error, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that you learn how to operate in these gifts. But God has now proliferated, you know, the prophetic uh, schools, the, the schools of training and teaching, praise God, and bless God, you can learn and understand who you are now, okay? And so, uh, what your authority is from God is that God has given you official permission to operate in the expertise that he's given you. Well, I think of people that uh, have a street ministry. Mm -hmm. You know, they, maybe they're dealing with drug addicts mm -hmm. and they're dealing with uh, prostitutes and they're dealing with people. But maybe they're not the best person to go to uh, the Ivy League schools. Mm -hmm. You know, another per, uh, ministry has a campus ministry and they're reaching out to students all over the country maybe. Mm -hmm. But they, they don't really have the same effectiveness when they go out of that ministry. Mm -hmm. And so it's important to know where you're assigned, mm -hmm. how to do it, and, and rejoice in that. Absolutely. You know, <laughs> each of those areas I just mentioned are, are huge areas, mm -hmm. you know. But that doesn't mean we can do every all things to all people. Absolutely. You know, what what did Jesus, he, he started out with the disciples and he said, go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Mm -hmm. You know, and that was a narrow assignment. 
He didn't say go to the world mm -hmm. to begin with. That's right. Right? Yeah. He didn't send the, the same thing with the 70. Go mm -hmm. to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Mm -hmm. Go two by two. That's the way he started them. And remember, we talked about Ezekiel. He said, what did he say? I, I'm sending you to, you know, the Israelites who are stiff-hearted, hard-headed, but that's your assignment. That's where yeah. I sent you. But and he said, I'm not sending you to somebody you can't with difficult languages right, yes. mm -hmm. and all this kind of thing. These are your own people, your basically. Your own people, praise God. And so that that's was his awesome. assignment. That was his call. And so, you know, we look at prophets today and, and apostles today. Some are sent to the nations. You know, we have the Chuck Pierces and the, um, the Cindy Jacobs. They're sent to the nations, okay? And they have a national... Um, a national authority, a national jurisdiction. We're going to get into jurisdiction in just a minute. And then we have the local prophets, praise God, the local prophets. We even have prophets that are prophets of the house. Okay, I Amen. grew up spiritually with a woman that was a prophet, but she wasn't a prophet anywhere else except in that church that we were in. You know, praise God. So she was, you know, she was an Anna, so to speak. She had an Anna anointing on her. She didn't even visit other churches. Or the only church that she went to was that the church that where we were, and that's when she had a very weighty anointing and authority. You know, as the prophet. And this was way back in the late '60s, early '70s. So we, uh, so understanding the offense. You know, it has going to have a lot to do with you understanding your authority and the prophecies that God. What are the prophecies that God has given you? What are the words that you've spoken to other people? And as you study the words, okay, God is always going to cause you to prophesy from your metron of authority, okay? What has he given you authority over? And you can tell in the prophecy what God, you know, and how God is using you. Okay, bless but the Lord. Let me just mention a couple of others. There's, there are a lot of people right now that have a gift. I call it the blue jeans gift. Uh -huh. You know, the, the, there's one guy that has uh, a white guy that has dreads mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. I mean, he, and blue jeans mm -hmm. and, and, you know, uh, some of these guys have Todd tats. White. Todd White. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I mean, this guy is powerful, oh, you know. But look at the lady that, that helped you understand that a woman can be a minister. Absolutely. What does she look she like? She was just a dainty little, she had, oh, just beautiful, nicely polished nails. I mean, not like, you know, anything uh, overdone. I mean, she in, as far as a woman was concerned, you would consider her as the kind of dresser like a Jackie Kennedy would be. You know, very classy, classy. very feminine. You know, and it's like, wow, you know, even with that femininity, the softness of her outer appearance, that woman has some power and authority coming from the inside of her. You hear what I'm saying? So, <clears throat> so it's okay. Sometimes God will take you to the people that are, what, are classy, yes. or, mm -hmm. who are, you know, and it's important for you to be be comfortable in who God's sending you See, to and, that, that's and what who we're you are. About. And that's exactly you know, isn't that what we're awesome? talking about today, you know, is, you know, who you are and the authority that God has given you. And stop trying to cross over on the other track. You know what I'm saying? You got a bunch of tracks going in, you know, coming out of the glory of God. And you over here on track number eight, and you trying to get over there on track number one because track number one looks like, you know, the person on track number one looks like they're getting all the glory, you know? Wait a minute now. God is giving you an assignment, and your glory is in that assignment, okay? Your power is in that assignment. Your grace to do it is in that assignment. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so That's when awesome. we get our eyes off our brother's work and start focusing in on who God has called us to be and preparing ourselves for the power that he's given us because it's God's assignment. You know, it's God's assignment. So like I said the other day, if you're jealous or envious of, of somebody else's ministry, you're not really jealous of that person. You're jealous of God. You're telling God that he don't know what he's doing. You should have given that to me. I want that. You know, God has placed you according to his will and his plan. He's given you the personality that you need. He's given you everything that you need to do, you know, what he's called you to do and the, and, and, and the authority that he's given you. Now, the jurisdiction, okay, and remember now, you have official permission from God to walk in the calling that he's given you, and that is your authority, okay? Praise God. And the jurisdiction... Um, it goes along with your authority, and the two work hand in hand. All right, now, your jurisdiction is your practical authority, the authority that's granted to you 
to administer it. Listen, this is the this is a you know um, uh, just um, definition of the word. So practical practical authority granted to administer justice within a defined area of responsibility. So you have a place and assignment to administer the authority that God has given you. Okay? And that is your jurisdiction. God has given you the authority. Okay? He's called you the prophet. You've got an authority in a specific area. Now he's given you a place to administer, you know, the justice, the anointing, the grace, you know, that he's assigned to you. It is your area of responsibility. It's one thing to have the authority, but it's another thing to use it. God has given you the authority. Now, where are you going to use that authority? That's your jurisdiction. And that responsibility can be a local. We're talking about Anna. We're talking about Ezekiel and Jeremiah. Jeremiah was national. Even though Ezekiel got a call to the children of Israel, there were times when in the spirit realm, God would send him to other places. Like he was in captivity in Babylon. Okay. And God would give him words about Babylon. So, and, and so, uh, you have national, you have local, you have church, you know, wherever it is. You, and then we have those seven, those seven mountains, okay? <clears throat> your sphere of authority can be in government. Your, I mean, your jurisdiction can be governmental. Your jurisdiction can be political. Your jurisdiction can be in arts and ent entertainment. Your jurisdiction can be in religion. And what are some of the others, okay? And so uh, education, there's a few others. So, so you have... Uh, 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 an authority given to you from God to be used in a specific area or place. And not only that, but there are very, very successful ministries in each mm -hmm. of those areas. Absolutely. Praise God. You know, you would think of the poor, you know, but you have Salvation Army throughout the whole world. Oh, yeah. National. You know? And mm -hmm. they're dealing with the poorest of the poor. You're dealing with missionaries. And, and they end up, God blessing them. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And miracles are shining forth and starting mm -hmm. huge churches in third world countries. Mm -hmm. You know, you have... Look at the evangelists that went to Africa and had millions come to his services. Mm -hmm. You know, you have people... Reinhard Bonnke. Reinhard Bonnke. Mm -hmm. in, the, in the Old Testament, uh, they actually had... Um, they were part of the government. And so the government took care of their, their needs. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And even in the Church of England, mm -hmm. when John Wesley first started out, he was a minister and they took care of him. Mm -hmm. Now, when he started preaching that the gospel was open to everyone... Uh, they threw him out of the church, but then the, the, the poor took care of him. And his, his messages were so powerful that people would buy his sermons mm -hmm. and he was provided for. So God can use you wherever you are, whatever ministry, and still be your provider. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's my point. God's going to provide for you. How to do it? He's going to provide because you're going to find that we call it a convergence mm -hmm. where your ministry and the blessings of God come together and the anointing falls and you stay in your lane and mm -hmm. that's where the, the money will be. That's where the, that's right. the, the influence will be. Yes. How did it yes, convergence of all that, your anointing power influence all comes together. Absolutely. And so we started out talking about, you know, the difference between a prophesier and the actual office of a prophet. So we talked about your authority. We talked about your jurisdiction, okay? And remember, your authority has to do and is determined by your place of assignment. So these are three, um, uh, how can I say, um, the three factors uh, that distinguish you as a prophet. Your authority, your jurisdiction, the place of assignment, okay? And jo as Jonathan just said, your primary anointing is going to be in that assignment, your primary grace is going to be there, okay? And again, your authority, that is determined by the place of assignment. And every prophet has authority. Every prophet not only has authority, but every prophet has a jurisdiction to operate that authority in, okay? And so God is, you know, not assigning his body to be like half, a half a body. You know what I'm saying? When God creates this, he created his body, he created his body in a fullness. And so remember, there's a holistic anointing and grace, you know, that God has given you. Stop running around like a chicken, you know, with his head off, wondering and not understanding who you are and, and what your placement is and looking out at what others are doing and, and, and not, you know, understanding who you are, you know, not liking who you are and where you are, wanting to be where someone else is. And that's okay. 
But I'm going to tell you something. What I would prefer to have you do is find out where you are and what God has given you to do, okay? Before you start drawing on, you know, uh, they say drawing on your anointing, but really what you want to do is you want to steal their anointing. You want to steal their grace. You don't want to work to get to the place, you know, to get that kind of an anointing. And we're going to tell you how to do that in just a minute. Okay, but you have a personal anointing and a personal jurisdiction that God has given you. So we're talking about you today. Okay, you as the prophet of God, building yourself up in your most holy faith to the place where God can entrust you with his jurisdiction, with his authority, with his jurisdiction. And then there's another, there's two more points that I want to make on that. But go on, baby, you want to say something? Well, I was just thinking about the power of the underground church in China mm -hmm. and you know, so many times they'll have a gathering and they'll say, what do you need the most? And in, in the West here, especially in America, we'll say, well, I need money. I'll need a car. I need a, a, a boyfriend or a girlfriend, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> and, you know, these outer things. And you ask the member of the underground church and say, I, I need a, a, another message on the power of prayer amen because they amen. understand if they have that power mm -hmm. that's that's the key to the rest it's yes, like a it fish, sure the old saying about a fish and, mm -hmm. and being a fisherman yeah you know teach uh, somebody teach, teach somebody, somebody to fish, fish they eat for a day yeah teach somebody yeah. how to fish they can eat for a lifetime no, give yeah. somebody a fish yeah. to eat for a day all right teach them the fish and they eat for a lifetime and they have I, I just heard a testimony not long ago about uh, a young girl that wanted to uh, to minister in the next town over and mm -hmm. the floodwaters came up and they were overflowing and the bridge, none of the bridges worked, everything was flooded out. So she just asked God to help her and, and she walked on the water to get over to the other town. Yeah. This is a young girl, you know, 12 I think she mm -hmm. was, something along those lines. You that, hear about I, the kids in China and the underground church walking on water over there. Yeah. They do it for fun. Because <laughs> they can, <laughs> praise God. And because of the need, you the know, need. it wasn't well, just being a need, flippant, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But they, to go minister, absolutely, and, and so and get they, to a church service, actually. Yeah. So they're not yeah. asking for, and that's where we've got to change our mindset. We're always looking at the money. We're always looking at the uh, what, what's stopping us. Mm -hmm. You know, and what's stopping us is a lack of prayer. Mm -hmm. What's stopping us is that mm -hmm. lack of anointing. You said what's it, stopping Dave. us you is said it, that. Dave. Closeness to the throne. Mm -hmm. mm. God Praise have God. mercy. Praise Hear God. Our repentant hearts today. So we went over your authority. We went over the fact that uh, every prophet has authority. Every prophet has this uh, has a, a jurisdiction to operate that authority in. Guess what? There is a second anointing in grace. Okay, a sec another Praise factor, God. a third factor that distinguishes you. You know, as a prophet. And that is your angel army, okay? Ooh. Your angel guard. When you are assigned, okay, and I, uh, and I want you to get these scriptures, Jeremiah 1, 5, Luke 2, 36, 2 Corinthians 10, 13, 15. And then you're going to read in Ezekiel chapters 1, 2, and 3, and then chapter 10. Okay. No, I'm sure nobody had a chance to write that down. That's okay. We'll, we'll say it later. But okay. Jeremiah 1, 5, Luke 2, 36, 2 Corinthians 10, 13, 15, and Ezekiel. You should be reading Ezekiel anyway, okay? You're a prophet. You need to know about Ezekiel. So just read the whole book of Ezekiel. But more specifically today, we're dealing with the vision that God gave him when he called him, okay? And then what happened was those angels that he saw in that vision, those beings, they stayed with him throughout his entire ministry, kept coming to him, giving him instruction. Mm. Praise God. And so... Uh, we know that Ezekiel, he said the spirit of the Lord came in him and started and then started talking to him and giving him his assignment as the prophet. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Ezekiel is a precourse or a pre-runner, you know, a type and a sign of the Holy Spirit that Jesus released to us when he ascended. You know, after that, um, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall receive power. Well, Ezekiel, you know, minded his business, chilling at the river, okay? The heavens were opened up to him. Hallelujah. Good morning, Gary, and everybody else that's on. 
the heavens were opened up to him, hallelujah, and he saw this wonderful vision of the cherubim, four of them that God had sent on assignment to him to call him into the ministry, and those cherubim stayed with him throughout his ministry, helping him to get done what he needs to get done. Now, you saw, you read that mighty, that mighty anoint, that mighty vision that God opened up to him, man, these cherubim, the four of them, they, oh man, he saw thunder, he saw lightning, he saw the whirlwind, he saw the, the, the Shekinah glory cloud, he saw the fire, all of that was there, all of it was there to give him his assignment. And do you think that God is no less giving you anointings and graces and angels to come with you to do the assignment and the work mm. that he has called you to do? Ezekiel needed it, God sent it to him, you need it too, and God has sent you anointed angels, hallelujah, to help you in this walk. He gave us a word yesterday about the angels. He prophesied to us and he said that he had given us an angel uh, to bring the understanding and the revelation to us. There's gonna, it's an angel assigned to do that. Then there's, and this is with the seer, okay? The seer anointing. There's an angel assigned to give you the vision. There's another angel assigned to anoint for that, anoint you for that vision uh, to come to pass. And another angel assigned for you to understand and to give revelation and understanding and counsel on what the vision means. That's three angels. Ezekiel had four cherubim follow him throughout his career, okay, praise God, do you think that God has left you alone, you have an angel guard, prophet, oh man, this is an, an, an angel guard, is, is like the Natah, baby, the Natah anointing of the prophet, what are you packing, who is following you, who is your crowd, who's your entourage, who's your posse, <laughs> <laughs> you got a posse prophet, Okay, praise God that's going to make sure that what God says through you comes to pass. Hallelujah. An angel guard. That's 1 Kings 17 1. 1 Kings 17 1. And then you're going to read about Ezekiel's angels. You know, the angels that God sent to him every time, you know, that he needed a word, needed something to get done, and, and it, on his calling. When God called him into the the, uh, the ministry as a prophet, the boy, the man, he was 30 years old. He was called in to, to be a prophet day one. He was preparing his whole life to be a priest now, but he was never ordained as a priest because he was in captivity. Nebuchadnezzar, you know, had captured, you know, them and they were in captivity. So, but God still came to him and still graced him and still gave him an anointing. Some of you are in captivity too. Captivity to those demonic thoughts and to of the demonic forces that have come against you, the traumas that you've, you've gone through, okay, in your life, those wounds that are on your soul and on your heart, you're in captivity to those. But God, nevertheless, and you think that you are no good to be used by God because of your past. You don't think that God could want to even use you because of where you've been and what you've been through. And some of you may not act like you think that way, you know, on the surface, but way down deep on the inside, there's always a question of because of the shame, you know, that you're still going through because of the things that from your past. But God is saying, you know, beloved, look up, but look up. If he could use a murderer, okay? If he could use uh, a man that was killing his babies, his, his kids, Okay, we're talking about Paul here, who was Saul when he was murdering God's family. And if God can use a murderer, you hear what I'm saying? He can use you. And it's not even, you know, it's not even about, you know, the fact that um, what, I'm, what I'm trying to say is that I'm not calling you a murderer, you know. But what I'm saying is the grace of God, the glory of God, the forgiveness of God goes a long way. And therefore now, beloved, there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ, okay? And those that call upon the name of the Lord shall not be ashamed. And so that shame factor that you have, that condemnation factor that you have, ain't gonna work in your prophetic authority, okay? Ain't gonna work. <laughs> okay, so we gotta get rid of that first, okay? Oh, hallelujah. Praise, Praise healing, God, God, hallelujah. hallelujah. We send, God has sent that emotions. anointing, receive that anointing right now. Oh, oh dear, hallelujah. God is sending forth an anointing right now to break, hallelujah those emotional ties that you have that are unclean and unfit for the kingdom of God. They're illegal, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, they're illegal in the kingdom Thank of you God. God. You're, you, are, you live in the kingdom. You are seated in heavenly places, you know, in Christ Jesus. And shame is illegal in heaven, okay? Condemnation is illegal in heaven. 
Okay. Well, let's just pause for a moment on that thought because the, the spirit is dwelling there. Mm -hmm. You know, some people have done some crazy things. And Paul even reminds us in Philippians that he was a Jew of the Jews. He was passionate. Mm -hmm. He had legal rights. To, mm -hmm. You know, he was doing everything the law said. Mm -hmm. But he says, I count it all garbage mm -hmm. that I may win Christ. Amen. Amen. We're all as filthy rags. Not Amen. one of us can stand up. I don't care if you mm -hmm. grew up in the best family, you were an eighth generation minister mm -hmm. kid, you know, you still have to come to Christ on your own. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. There's still a day mm -hmm. and an hour when you have to say, Jesus is my Lord. Amen. Oh, Amen. let's all receive Praise from the God. kingdom of God. Praise God. So you have your authority, you have your jurisdiction. And you have your angel guard, your angel army, your posse, <laughs> okay, Amen. making sure that things get done. And then the third thing that I want to go over, or the fourth thing that I want to go over you with is the fact uh, that what distinguishes you, you know, in the authority and jurisdiction uh, that you have and that angel guard, you know, that you have is all predicated upon the fact that you stand in God's presence. Mm. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. It is you you know, coming before the Lord. And some people would prefer to have a title of prophet, you know, than to stand in the presence of God and get the true power and authority and anointing of a prophet. So we're not talking about here about just, you know, getting that title as a prophet and going handing out your business cards. <laughs> Saying, I'm prophet so-and-so now. Could be that. You could be ready. Ezekiel, certainly. Uh, God used him immediately uh, once he received that. Well, it, that's what it looked like that it was an immediate anointing because what God did was he not only did he send the angels, the angels even translated them into one from one place to another. I mean, and he was astonished for seven days, didn't even know how he got there. The angels just took him from one place on the river and brought him to another place, you know, on the river. And he was astonished for seven days. And when he came out of his astonishment, he was just sitting there like astonished. He didn't know. Can you imagine four cherubim, like the power that you saw that vision that he saw four of them lightnings and he even th saw the throne. He saw God's throne, you know, and uh, they, the thing had eyes all over it, the seeing eyes of God. And, and the thing was just, was just, you know, wow. All I can say is that in order to even see that vision, he had to have a certain amount of preparation to even live through that kind of glory. Okay, and God sent that kind of glory to him and then took him up, gave him his commission as a prophet, lifted him up and translated him to a totally different place than he was. I mean, it was in the same, it was still in Babylon, he was still in captivity, but he went from one place on the river to another place on the river, translated. And it was, it was so astonishing to him that he was out of it for seven days. And what I, I mean, not knocked out, but he was in shock. <laughs> he was in holy shock, you know, for seven days. And then finally he came out of it. Okay, he came out of it and started the ministry and the call and the work that God had assigned to him. Praise because God. what, uh, what God had done to him yes what uh -huh. he'd seen in heaven mm -hmm. you know, i was meditating this morning and god brought me back to psalm 23 and we're all familiar with that the lord is my shepherd to feed to guide and to shield me i shall not want he lets me lie down in green pastures he leads me beside the still and quiet waters he refreshes and restores my soul i'm talking and this is out of the amplified bible here and the last verse is the one that he's, the, the Amplified expands a little bit. Surely goodness and mercy and unfailing love shall follow me all the days of my life. Hmm. Who's following you? Goodness, <laughs> goodness and, mercy. and mercy. Hallelujah. Hey, I like those angels. <laughs> Amen. And I shall dwell forever throughout all my days in the house and in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Okay, so that's that's the key to our understanding mm -hmm. is being in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You want to get more powerful. How do we do that, prophet? Praise God. We're going to talk about that. Okay, so we know you have authority. We know you have jurisdiction. Okay, and so we talked about uh, your angel armies, you know, the guard of angels, you know, that God has sent with you. But as well now, all right, you, want, you have to understand that you, the fact that you stand in God's presence, even more so than the angel armies, that's how you get the angel armies. Good morning, Brian. Thank you so much for joining us. Hallelujah. Uh, thank you. He said he enjoys the teachings. We appreciate you, man of God. Thank you for joining us this morning. 
Okay, and so now, standing in the presence of God, hallelujah, prophet, this is where you belong. This is the first place that you belong, praise God. And the last hallelujah. place. And the last place, <laughs> hallelujah. And the middle place. And the middle place, okay. <laughs> Bless the Lord. So, you know, when God calls you as a prophet, don't go out and print your, your, your business cards too quickly. What we want you to do is understand that you got to get in the presence of God. That's the place, standing in his presence. And God has been sending anointings and he's been sending his glory to our meetings in the morning he's been showing up and i say he put his foot in it uh ezekiel says it was the hand of the lord hallelujah he said he knew the hand of the lord was upon him he knew it was god when the hand of the lord comes when the glory of god comes you know it's god and you're not going to mm. mistake it for anything else god's signature is his signature and there is none like him Okay, and there's no getting it confused when the hand of the Lord or the foot of the Lord. And remember, I told you, I don't care what body part it is of God that shows up. <laughs> I just want him there. Okay, hand, foot, arm, whatever. <laughs> Praise Let me God. just talk about that for a second. Mm -hmm. I, I still remember that uh, I had a chance to go to Oral Roberts University because I had heard about miracles. I had heard about the power of God. And we had a, a, a service in the evenings for the kids. Uh, it was a lot like a Pentecostal Catholic meeting. Mm -hmm. And just the one, we had 3,000 students there, and just the ones that wanted to show up would mm -hmm. come. There were, so only 1,000 came, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> but there was still an awful lot. But there would be, and, and I didn't know anything about the gifts of the Spirit. I didn't know anything about these things, but I wanted to know. I had a heart to know. And when that service started, and different gifts began to be uh, operated mm -hmm. and you could f the thing is i could feel the purity of god i could feel his power oh, i could feel his presence mm -hmm. and it was so strong and so pure that I never doubted that God was in this place, mm -hmm. that God was moving through these folks, that God was speaking through that prophet mm -hmm. you know, or whatever gift was being used at that time. And that's, I just want everybody to know that you're, there's something inside you that recognizes the truth, mm -hmm. something that recognizes the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. and you may not be able to put words on it. Mm -hmm. You may not have the all the scripture and all the the understanding you may mm -hmm. not you some people don't even know how to read but they recognize in their spirit who god who is god and they is. recognize when it's real absolutely and when it's pure and when it's awesome mm -hmm. so don't worry about where you are and you're saying things perfectly or you're praying perfectly mm -hmm. realize it's all about the spirit of god mm -hmm. and people will recognize that absolutely in you. absolutely recognize so. that presence amen so your spiritual authority and your jurisdiction has been assigned to you by god already and so he's going to unfold all that to you, just like when he sent the cherubim uh, to Ezekiel to call him into ministry. It was powerful, dynamic. The man was astonished for seven days that, you know, God translated him from one place, took him up. He don't even know how he got to where he got to. And he was just laying there in shock, the shock of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, the shock of the power of God. What I want you to remember is, though, that Ezekiel said the Spirit spoke to him, but before it spoke to him, it went in him. He knew that the Spirit of God had come in on the inside of him. You know you have the power of God on the inside of you. You have the living God living on the inside of you. Praise God. And so now God entrusts his spiritual authority to individuals who are close to him. Okay, mm -hmm. and spend time with him. Honey, why don't you read, get Hebrews 1, 13. Okay, and so God wants you to understand that being close to him uh, is, is extremely important in this gifting and this calling. Because you say you have a friend, you say you have someone that you love, and you're walking in the name of God, and you never even spend any time with him. You're never even seeking an opportunity to spend time with him. Well, you know, I believe that in the Ezekiel situation, you know, he might have been praying. Jonathan's idea is that he was over there on the river, by the river Chebar, praying because he was uh, about to be ordained as a priest, came from a priestly family, a priestly, priestly lineage. But I'm saying that, you know, and it could be taken any way. And, and I'm not saying that this is scripture because it doesn't say what he was doing. But I'm saying he was just chilling out. He was just chilling. You're just hanging out at the river, you know, as they do. You and what? You were in captivity? Where do you go? You go hang out at the river, talk to people, and just kind of chill. 
you know, and, and, and then he was probably laying down in the, you know, you know, in repose and the heavens were opened up to him. And I, like, again, it doesn't say what he was doing. It's just saying he was by the river. And I'm just adding that part to it, that that's what I'm kind of thinking, you know, uh, uh, could have been, could have been there. But what you need to understand is that God, God, um, <clears throat> Okay, he's going to plug I'm this in here. Okay, oh. Thank you. God came and got Ezekiel, all right? God can come and get you, all right? You know, it was totally sovereign. It was a sovereign act by God. Do you think that Ezekiel knew to pray to God to ask him for that kind of an experience that he had? <laughs> Do you think that was in his mind and his heart to ask God for that? No, but he now is our witness. He is in our great cloud of witnessing. And if God can bring that kind of authority and power, those cherubim were some powerful, intelligent, you know, obedient angels to the glory of God. And they represented the glory of God. That's what Ezekiel said. I have a vision of the glory of God. He saw the throne. He saw the firmament. He saw everything. Okay, God Ezekiel is our witness now that if God can do that for Ezekiel, he can do that for you as well. God is putting you in a place to entrust you with his spiritual, his spiritual authority, giving you a, a, a jurisdiction to operate that authority in. Hallelujah. Praise God. So let's see what Hebrews 1.13 says. But to which of the angels said he at any time, sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? Listen, they minister. The angels have been assigned to minister for you, minister to you, but to minister for you. And who more than, you know, uh, than a prophet of God, that God has assigned angels to minister for you, to get forth, uh, to bring forth the call, the work that God has assigned you to. Remember, there are angels that when you speak that word, there are angels on assignment to make sure that that word comes to pass. Okay? There are angels that are of revelation that are tapping you on the shoulder, bringing the revelation to you. Other angels that are assigned to get that word out. Okay? Praise God. And you as a seer, that seer anointing, God is, is, is increasing the seer anointing. And angels going to bring you those visions, just like, you know, God sent the angels and Ezekiel had this tremendous uh, vision, you know, of these four living creatures that represented the glory of God with, with fire, with the whirlwind, and with the Shekinah glory, and with, uh, um, um, what was it, the... Um, um, lightning <laughs> all kind of noise angels flapping their wings and he heard the flapping of the wings and oh man that is the glory of God what was and what was the purpose it wasn't just for him you know to have that experience although it was a great experience it was for him to receive his assignment to go forth and to do what God had called him to do and God was letting him know that this is what you pack in but uh, uh, Ezekiel you got this okay? oh, I, thought it, I thought it was so he could uh, write a book and make a bunch of money. <laughs> oh, praise that, that's God. That's what people do these days. They mm -mm. they have a spiritual experience and they write a book mm -hmm. and get on the travel circuit. I don't even, I don't and, even, I don't even yeah. think Ezekiel had business cards. I really, <laughs> <laughs> I really don't. Okay. No, it was to empower him for service. Okay, yeah. so prophets will have added weight, okay? You know, then those that prophesy, a prophet will have an added weight to his words, okay? An added glory and an added power. And the authority on the words they speak, okay? So there's an added weight, there's an added glory on the words that you speak to make sure the words come to pass. Your words will have the authority and the power to alter life to alter situations to change directions okay and so god is going to entrust this kind of authority with someone who what who are close to him who can hear his voice who what spend time with him okay and so there are ways if, if there are ways to increase your authority and we're going to talk about that too uh and which was going to bring us to what we're going to be talking about tomorrow as well okay so um, remember when Moses was told when he spoke to Pharaoh, that when he spoke to Pharaoh, that he would be as a God to him. Okay. Not like a God as a God to Pharaoh. You know, that's in the scripture. Okay. Ezekiel seven, I mean, Exodus seven, one. Okay. But when Aaron 
was told to speak. Aaron was a prophet of Moses, speaking the same words, but there was a different weight and a different authority on the words when Moses spoke them. So they're different ministrations, different authorities. Okay, but you as walking in, in, as a prophet, you know, we talk about the prophet Ezekiel. Man, did you, when you read about all the stuff that God gave him to do, he needed those cherubim. You hear what I'm saying? He needed that kind of power. He needed that kind of authority to get the work done that God had given him to do because God had sent him to a rebellious, stiff-necked, hard-headed people. Praise God. Just a call coming through. Okay. So, um... So you remember that, okay? So that there's difference in weights of the anointing that God has given you. And when you prophesy from the office of a prophet rather than just a prophesier, the office carries more weight and can accomplish more than the gift of prophecy. So we want to distinguish the weight of the office or the words and the power and the authority that God has given you in the office distinguishes you Oh, from just a prophesier. Although the gift of prophecy is great and it has its place in the body of Christ, we're not putting that down. That's absolutely necessary. But what we're trying to show you is the weight and the difference, okay, in the authority, okay, and in the um, jurisdiction of a prophet. A prophet's words with the weight and the authority that God has put on them, they come to pass, okay? They can initiate transformation. They can create chain reactions of events uh, to bring uh, about a manifestation of that spoken word. The, the weight of the prophet, when you speak the word, you know, your words have the power to bring what they are saying to pass. Praise God. And always, you know, with the word of a prophet, his words are confirmed with signs and wonders. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Man of God. Well, it's just so important that we understand where where to go to get more power. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about that. Yeah. Praise God. We're just going to give you an overview of your uh, authority and the authority of the prophets and scriptures, and give you some uh, some scriptures for that. And then we're going to talk about how to increase your authority in God. Praise God.